when I was getting bad just now, I can't see the color of my chalk. All right, now, tonight, uh, this is going to be a sermon. It's going to be kind of boring for some of you. It's going to be a Bible lesson tonight. Amen. And I'm going to have to get out of here now tomorrow, probably afternoon, get back home and go in a week now. I'd like to stay with you and preach with you some more, but I have to get back. I've got an empty house back there with nobody in it. My kids are all grown and gone, I'm married. Now, neighbors are taking care of the house while we're gone. I got a thoroughbred German Shepherd back there that's only about a year old. He's pretty skittish and getting around. I'm afraid to get hit by a car while I'm gone. I'm going to take care of him and some other things. But I thought before I'd go, I'd just give you the whole Bible. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight we'll start at Genesis, we'll end at Revelation. Yeah. Now here we start right here. You got a Bible, and your Bible, you know what it says. If you read your Bible, you read your Bible, and your Bible says, In the beginning, in the beginning, God. That's spiritual. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That's physical. You got that? The earth is physical. The heavens are physical. In your Bible, it keeps talking about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Everybody tries to figure out what they are, and one time they think they're one thing, and one time they think they're another. And you take Schofield, one of the greatest Bible scholars that ever lived, he never did get it right. And Clarence Larkin, who's another great Bible scholar, never got it right. And Bullinger didn't either. And they all try to figure out what's the difference between these kingdoms. And most of them say they're the same. And the ones that say that the different can't tell you what the difference is. The kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. You know what the trouble is? The trouble is when you think about heaven, you think about going home to be with the Lord. But that ain't the heavens. The heavens are right over your head. Go out and look at them. Yeah. You know what the earth is? It's in the heavens. It's right there with the, with the solar system, and the heavens are physical. So if you're talking about the kingdom of heaven, you're not talking about an invisible place that you can't see. You're talking about the ground you're sitting on. The kingdom of heaven is an earthly, physical, visible kingdom. It's on, it's on, it's on earth. The other one is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not on earth, it's spiritual. Amen. Paul tells you what it is in the New Testament, and Paul in the New Testament says about the, the kingdom of God, it is righteous joy, righteousness, and peace in the Holy Ghost. That's not a physical, literal, visible kingdom. Before I was saved, I came up with a, a Episcopalian, they talked about spreading the kingdom, and then I got saved, first thing you know, all, 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 I was going to Southern Baptist Church, and they were talking about taking up an offering in the morning and bless this offering for the ongoing of thy kingdom. Did you ever hear that one? Well, what kingdom? Kingdom of God. You can't spread the kingdom of God with money. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. What's that got to do with money? What's that got to do with churches? Nothing. See that? So you say, well, I missed that. The body of Christ missed it. <laughs> the body of Christ went into apostasy thinking building buildings and stuff was spreading the kingdom of God. That has nothing to do with God. God's, spirit, God's, God's kingdom is righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. That has nothing to do with buildings or offerings. It has nothing to do with the number of baptism. It's not physical. Amen. Now we better quit here for some of you. Because <laughs> you can't imagine that. You're an American, you're, you're, you're Japheth, you're a materialist. All your religions start in Asia, all of them. The one you got said Asiatic, that book you got is Asiatic. That's Shem. God bless be the Lord God of Shem. Did you ever, touch, did you ever, did you ever think about all the, the, uh, the uh, religions that have come out of America? Tell me which one of them was right. <laughs> well, that's where Christian science originated. That's where the Mormons were. That's the Seventh-day Adventists. That's the Jehovah Witness. Everything ever came out of America was corrupt. You've got an Oriental book there. And the Oriental book, God, is spiritual, and he made heaven and earth, and that's physical. Never mind Darwin, he's crazy. <laughs> you have somebody here, and somebody here who's spiritual, and he creates somewhere physical. The kingdom of God is God over here, and the kingdom of heaven is sitting over here. You're taught to pray there one time in your Bible, and you're taught to pray at one time in the Bible, you're taught to pray, and you're taught to pray, 
You're taught to pray, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day of daily bread, and so forth and so on. Thy kingdom come. Which one? That's a Jewish prayer. That isn't the Lord's prayer. So they all call the Lord's prayer. They never get it right. The Lord said, they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. And he said, when you pray, you pray, our Father. He never called Father our Father in his life. There's a whole prayer Jesus Christ makes to God the Father in John 17. He doesn't say our Father one time. He says, Father, Holy Father, my Father. He never says our Father. Our Father is not a Christian prayer for Christians. It's a Jewish prayer for Jews. The Jewish disciples, before the crucifixion, said, teach us to pray. And he said, when you pray, you don't pray in my name. He told you to pray in his name. That takes place later. It don't take place there. He's telling the disciples, when I'm gone, and so forth, so on, and ask what you want to in my name. Those Jews said, teach us to pray. And he said, when you pray, you pray, our Father which art in heaven. That's Father of a nation. That's Father of a nation. That's a different type of thing. All right, now you come through here, what do you find here? You find, first of all, back here in the Old Testament, God created the heaven and the earth. And when you get back here on this God created the heaven and the earth, you get a peculiar thing. Because when God made the heaven and the earth, even before he made the heaven and the earth, there was somebody around beside the Lord. And your Bible is in Isaiah chapter 14. And in Isaiah chapter 14, before Adam ever showed up, there was somebody called Lucifer. And he shows up and he says, I'm going to ascend and put my throne above the stars of God and be like the Most High. I'm going to ascend and put my what? Throne. There's a king there involved. And you've got somebody back here when God makes this stuff, he said, I'm going to go above God and I'm going to take it. And I'm going to be like the Most High. And God said, you're going to be brought down to hell the sides of the pit. Now when he puts the, the left down here and puts him over things, you know what happens? And you can't, you, can't, you can't possibly fail to miss it. When he puts him down here, he makes him king over the king of earth. He gave him the earth to run. And the anointed cherub that covereth and is running the earth. And then he rebelled and God kicked him out. But the kingdom of God was there like that. That means he had to be a spiritual being. And the devil was a spiritual being. So he had two crowns. He was king over a physical outfit, the earth, and a spiritual outfit. He's one of God's creations. And what happens? Well, you know what happens. And he rebels against God, and he gets thrown out and kicks out. And when he gets kicked out, God has no king. And they're sitting right there. So the Lord said, let's make a king. Here's the king coming down here. Let us make a man after our image. And so he makes Adam, and he makes Eve, and he makes him what? First of all, he makes him out of the dust of the ground. Kingdom of heaven, literal, physical, visible dirt. Dust thou art, and the dust thou shalt return. That ain't spiritual. Amen. That's ground. Amen. All right, he made him that, but something else about him. He said, let, let him have a dominion over the earth, and the birds, and the bees, and the cattle, and this, all that, let him be subject to that man, and let the man and the woman be man and wife, and let them bring forth children and replenish the kingdom. Man and woman were made uh, man and wife. Man and, uh, wo a man and woman, uh, woman was made wife and husband to replenish the earth for children. Now, you know, you're, you're in America today, you're in a country where they've torn the family all to hell and they're telling it first. Well, they want to get rid of what? The first thing. The family was before the church. The family was before Christ died on the cross. The family was the first thing God made. Man, woman, be fruitful and multiply. Amen. Have children and replenish the earth. The man is male. He has to pretend to be female to get married to a male. You know what a man is who is a hypocrite? Well, a man who is who is professed to be something he's not. He's a hypocrite. He's not married. He's a hypocrite. They don't, they don't, they don't expand and replenish the earth. They recruit. That's what they do. And if all of them lived, nobody else lived, the whole race would die off pretty quick. <laughs> but anyway, there's Adam there. What is he? He's a spiritual being made in the image of God. He's a physical being made of the earth. 
when Christ shows up, you know what he says? He says, I'm the son of God. Then he says, I'm the son of man. He has both kingdoms. So when Adam is first made, he has first kingdoms. And we're about to get a one kingdom job from here to here, and from here to here, and from here to here, and then a two kingdom sitting down here. And what you'll remember, if you remember nothing about this message is, when Christ is on earth, both kingdoms are there. Kingdom of God, Son of God, Kingdom of Man, Son of Man, see? And when he's gone, there's only one kingdom there. And you're getting ready here to have a disaster. Adam shows up and up shows Adam. You know the story. Uh, the devil comes along when Adam isn't around and he gets talking with Eve and he, 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 he makes nothing of her in very short uh, uh, time by uh, positive thinking. You got a Bible there? Turn to Genesis. Um, Brother, Pastor, if you would read us there. I want a reading there that says when Eve saw the, tr the tree on the fruit, the fruit on the tree, what she did. Read that for us real loud. Genesis there. Chapter, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 3. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Positive. And that it was pleasant to the eye. Positive. And to be desired. To Positive. Wise, Positive. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And they both dropped dead and you've been dying ever since. Yeah, right. Alpha. Positive thinking. The power of positive thinking. Amen. You know the first word the devil ever said? Look, look where you're looking in Genesis and tell me the first word he ever said. Yay. Yay? That's yes. He's a positive thinker. Right. <laughs> and the cure is worse than the disease. Right. Let me ask you this. Uh, 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 the, the, the cure, oh, what, they, what do they say? An ounce of cure, an ounce of, of uh, prevention, is worth ten tons of, a, of a, what? All right. Which one is worth the most? The prevention. The negative. The cure is positive. That's the one that'll damn you. Now, see that thing? There's an American PhD in America that knows that. A guy with an IQ of 180 has no idea what I'm talking about at all. It's right in front of your face. Amen. You, you, the prevention keeps you from getting it. That's negative. And that's not expensive as the cure. The cure is expensive, and that's the one that messes you up. The positive. You ready to go home yet? <laughs> Got something to think about. He comes on there and says, uh, well, what, what's the trouble, Eve? She said, well, uh, I... I, I don't have any trouble. He said, you're happy. She said, I'm the happiest woman in the world. Said, nothing wrong? No, nothing wrong. No dishes to wash? No. No comp competition with another woman? No. Husband love you? He thinks I'm the only woman in this world. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Coming along. And he said, well, can you do anything you want around here? Oh, yeah, everything except that tree over there. And he said, well, isn't that a mean old God not to let you know about that? Why don't you just try that? Well, it'll, it'll kill us. No, it won't kill you. You should be as God as knowing good and evil. Education. <laughs> so she takes it, and now you know what happened? Sixty centuries of people dying, uh, they, and it's 100% for every one born, one die. You haven't cured one death, and you're not going to cure one death. And you got that from positive thinking. Well, up he shows, now up he shows, and you know what happens when up he shows? Well, what happens right, right there is certain, the kingdom of God disappears. He was made in the image of God. No man since was made, but since then has been made in the image of God. Amen. The Christian just as dumb as anybody. Well, you ought to love people and be nice to people because man is made in the image of God. No, he ain't. Amen. Turn to Genesis 5. He is your foot. You're not made in the image of God. Nobody on this earth is made in the image of God. Nobody. That's the image Adam lost when he sinned. Yeah. That's right. Look at there, Genesis chapter 5. Look at that list. After the man Adam begot a son in his own image. What verse is that? Three. Three. You see it? You see it? Now read it. Adam's 
image. When this boy was born, he wasn't born in the image of God at all. He was born in Adam's image, fallen Adam, ready for die, ready for dying. And so, since that time, no man has been born again in God's image unless he's been born again by a spirit's way of getting get born again. And Paul says that you're saved after the image of him who made him. Amen. Paul calls Jesus Christ the image of God. So there's no image of God from there clear down to here someplace. Right. So there's no kingdom of God. The, king, the devil said these kings are given to me and I give them to whomsoever I will. He says to Christ and Christ don't even correct him. So the devil took over right there, and the Lord said, yeah, I got me a king, but king get messed up. I got to get somebody else. So what does he do? He gets hold of Noah, and the, uh, down comes the rain, and Noah gets in the ark. You know all about it. He gets the ark and his uh, wife with him. Uh, that's, that's Joan of Ark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he gets in there with all those beasts and stuff and goes through. And what more comes out, you know what God gives him as, a, as a, a, a thing to go by? Just what he gave Adam. Turn to Genesis chapter, oh, Genesis ought to be about chapter 9. I want to think it begins where he tells uh, uh, Noah, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. What is that? 9-1. Nine, one. Brother, brother uh, Peacock, read it for us real loud. 9-1. Sons and said, to "Them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth." That's what he told Adam. So that's the replacement, and the replacing comes in Noah, and there's old Noah, and down comes that flood and drowns them all out. And when that thing is all over, God has him a king over what? Over the earth. He owns the whole earth. He comes out and he's got Shem. He says, "Okay, though you take Asia." He's got Ham. He says, "You take Africa." He says to Japheth, "You take Europe." That's the setting up a king for a kingdom. And it's a literal, physical, visible kingdom. Amen. Of that kingdom, he says, uh, but to Shem, blessed be the Lord God of Shem. What's that, what does that mean? All the religion, anything that's right headed toward God is going to head toward Shem. That word is, is, is called Shem in your newspaper. Anti-Semitic. They mean anti-Shemitic. But they don't leave the book, so they change it, fix it up. Right well, there's Noah, and there along comes a Noah, and Noah comes out, and then uh, when he comes out, the Lord says, I'm not going to drown the land, land anymore, but I've got to get me a king, because oh, no, Noah's lying down there, down there and he's, he, he's uh, uh, been drinking after the thing's all over. He's yeah. drinking there, drinking there, and then he gets drunk, and the Lord says, I've got to got got get rid of him, I've got to get me another one. So he gets him another one over here in this Abram. And he says to Abram, he says, I'll tell you what I'll do. He said, you, I'll, you, you follow me and go where I tell you to go, and I'll give you what's going to give him. He's going to give all the Near East to him, not just Palestine. Turn to Genesis chapter 14. He didn't give him just Palestine. He gave him Gaza, and he gave him Lebanon, and he gave him uh, Medina, and he gave him, he gave him the Middle East. Genesis 14, I think it is. I want to list that at end with the country that God gave Abraham. Is that 14? Is it 16? Where is it? I forgot where it's at. I want a thing there that says, all the land that you, 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 uh, you see, I'll give you. And he said, and he was asleep. Abraham was asleep when he gave it to him. What chapter is that? 12. 12? All right, get me 12. Get me 12 and about to look at the last six verses. That's the land that God gave Abraham. When God gave that land to Abraham, boy, he took about a piece of land given to somebody, he gave it to him. Look at that thing, and he's asleep. The guy's asleep, and when God gives him this, or this land, there are no conditions. What we, what we call an unconditional covenant. In plain words, God... 15, 18. What is it? 15, 18. Now, that sounds more like it. Yeah, that'd be it there. 15, 18. 15, 18. Now Abraham's asleep, and when God makes this covenant, so I'm going to give you this and give you that, he doesn't say one word about taking it back. And what you've got today is God will give that land to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, that's who he gave it to, and then he told them when they come to the land, he said, if you obey me, I'll let you stay, and if you don't, I'll run you out. They didn't obey, so he ran them out. So the world said he's all through with them, and he ran them out, but he's going to take them back. You say, why? He has to. 
You know why? Because when the original thing was made, or covenant was made, there are no conditions to it. Re look, let your eye run down the thing there. Find me a condition. Find me a condition that says, I'll let you stay in the land. Do you live right? When you live wrong, I'll run you out of it. That said to Moses. And that said to a nation. That said to a man. And he promised that man, I'll give you this hunk of lamb. Look out there. Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, all that stuff. All the land from the river of Egypt, Nile, what verse is that? 18, to the great river Euphrates. What line, what one, where is that at? Well, that's the Middle East. Everything the Muslims are on today belongs to Abraham. Every foot of ground. You don't even flip. You said, but the, the idea, but, but nothing. What it, Abraham wasn't told to do anything. He said, I'm going to give you that. No conditions. Now later when they become a nation, they have a conditional one. Follow me as a nation, I'll let you stay in. If you, don't mess, if you mess up, I'll kick you out. But that isn't what goes to Abraham. And Abraham's before the law. He's under grace. He's going to get it. Unless God lie on. Right. See that thing? Boy, when you've got a Bible, you've got a hot book in your hands, man. That thing is dynamite. You know, the, 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 the world order of nations, you know, over there in New York meeting, they don't know it, but they got a, they got a dynamite bomb under their platform that's going to blow them to hell one day. <laughs> All right, there's Isaac. Now, what is a Isaac? What is he Isaac? Isaac is a type of Jesus Christ. And that, when God wants to talk to you about uh, what love is, he never talks about a woman loving a man. He never talks about a man loving a woman. He doesn't even talk about a woman loving her baby. He said, can a woman forget her child? And he said, they might, but I won't forget you. Amen. But you take that thing right there, Isaac, what is he? He's a picture of the Son of God. So the first time love occurs in your Bible is a man loving his son. America got it wrong again. You can count on every cotton picking time. Amen. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us. Greater love hath no man than his, uh, that He laid down His life for His friends. God commended His love towards us, and that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. What is Isaac a picture of? He's a picture of Christ dying for your sins. Goes up the hill, up went Christ. Isaac's got the wood on his back, so has got Christ. I think said, I got the fire here, and I got the wood, but where's the lamb? And his daddy says, God will provide a lamb. Yeah, he will, <laughs> 1,800 years later, 2,000 years later down here. All right, it goes Isaac. There's Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob. See that word, Jacob? That's your word, it's Jake. And you take that word, we know what that word is in the English? It's Jim. It's Jimmy. It's James. You know what that word is in the Greek New Test? Jacobu. Jacob. That king, that Bible you got in your hand is King who? James. What? James. That's Jacob. What's Jacob? His other name is Israel. Wow. <laughs> you got the right book. Yes. And there's no new King James That's getting right. on. Right. It's, it's the old one getting on. Ecclesiastes, where the word of a king is, there's power. Amen. Where is another Bible from a king? None. No Bible pen in America came from a king. We didn't have any king. We've got a hymn book that says, Great God, our king in it, but that's just nonsense. Anybody knows great God's not our king. No, our, our, our great king isn't God, not, not America. But see that, James, that's Jacobu, if you've got your Greek New Testament. That's Jacob, old man Jacob. Your new name is Israel, Prince of God. Prince, that's the son of a king. Somebody is fooling around with the kingdom back there. And when the word of a king is there is power, open to your King James Bible in the preface to the mighty, uh, uh, mighty king, the, uh, the prince of England, the mighty God, and to King James, King James, where the word of a king is there is power. And if you've got a King James Bible, you've got a God of power. If you don't have a King James Bible, you don't have a power. That's what's going on there. All right, that, that, that's Jacob. Along comes a Abraham, and there's Isaac, and there's Jacob. And what's coming along later going to be 12 tribes. 
because his boys go down to Pharaoh's outfit, and they go down to Pharaoh's outfit, they become 12 tribes down there, and, they, and the man becomes a nation, a nation, and God has to get them out of there. And so when he gets them out of there, he calls out Moses, and along comes Moses. And Moses comes down there, he comes down there and appears before God and says, uh, who will I say sent me when I, when I come down there? He said, you tell him Jehovah sent you. And he said, well, what does Jehovah mean? Jehovah. It means I am that I am. See that J-E right there? Now that thing there, you'll find that before a lot of names. One time in the New Testament, you're told that the, the, the Hebrew word Joshua is the word for Jesus. You're told that in the book of Acts and the book of Hebrews. Sometime it comes out like that. And one time in the Psalms, it's like that. How many ever read a psalm and saw that? Want to see your hands? Block capital letters. J-A-H. Ja. Ja. And J. And that thing is talking about I am. I am. When Christ shows up, there it goes. I am. That thing in, 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 in Greek is saying, I am the Savior. Which means, Jesus saves. That J is an abbreviation. It's an abbreviation for Jehovah. In Jehovah, he tells you, he tells you what his nature is. I am that I am. But in Jesus, he tells you what he does. He saves sinners. Amen. So he says, Jehovah says, I've given my son a name above every name. Above what name? Above his own name. Because Jesus tells what he did for men. Jehovah's just who he is. I am that I am. I'm perfect. I am eternal. But I'll get, I'm going to put him one name above my name. What? My son. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Therefore, I have given him a name above every name. That the name of Jesus, every knee should bend, every head should bow, every tongue should confess. Jesus is Lord. Amen. That's the Father talking. Now, you get a little tight on me, all right? You look like, like we're kind of stepping on four. Let, let's get you uh, freshened up a minute. Turn to 1 John chapter 5 in the Old uh, 1 John 5 in the, in the New Testament. 1 John 5 in the New Testament. Um, Brother uh, Peacock, if you would read them 1 John chapter 5 and read them the last two verses. In, oh, excuse, yeah, 1 John chapter 5, the last two verses of chapter 5. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding, that we may know Him that is true, and we are in Him that is true, even His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God. Whoa! What did you say? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Did I hear you say, this is the true God? Yes. What was the name? How about that? Yes, sir. Yes. Jesus Christ is God. Amen. Well, ain't that a show of events, huh? Yeah. No wonder Muhammad don't like him. No wonder the UN doesn't like him. Yes. And when your founding fathers put this place together, they were deists. They believed in God, but they didn't believe in that. You won't find the name of Jesus Christ in the Declaration of Independence. You won't find it in the Bill of Rights. You won't find it in the Constitution. No, sir. Why? Because it's a name above every name. You kick him out, you know what you do? You kick your country out, stupid. You have, to, you have a, little, a little coin there that says, in God we trust. Well, who's God? Why, he's Christ. Christ was God manifest in the flesh. That's why your new Bibles leave it out. They get that thing in Second Peter, uh, Timothy chapter 3, 16, they have trouble with it. Well, after down they go in Egypt, down there for 400 years, and then Joshua brings them out. What is Joshua? Take your Bible and turn to chapter 8. Uh, Acts, uh, chapter 8. No, I went in on chapter 8. That'll be Acts chapter, uh, oh, that's uh, Stephen. Uh, that is that 8, isn't it? Okay. 7. Acts 7. Give me Acts 7. He is, uh, Stephen is preaching there, and he's preaching about uh, what they did when they came out of the land of Egypt. And I want a verse that says that that Jesus brought them out. Acts chapter 7. Isn't that there? 
25, verse 25. 45. 45? All right, 45. So my memory is not much good anymore, and I can't go back and read it to see it, but I know it's there. I've been, I've been through that thing 150 times, and I know it's there somewhere. <laughs> All right, now, who bought them out of the land of Egypt? Jesus. See that? Well, that must be a mistake. So all the new Bibles take it out and put in Joshua. And they lied. When Joshua was out there, he was, just before they came to Jericho, he looked over and saw a man standing there with a sword in his hand. And he came and said, who are you? And he said, take the shoes off your feet. I'm captain of the Lord host. Is that the angel of God? Jesus Christ is the captain, he talks about in Hebrews. The captain of our faith. Salvation. That was Jesus brought him out. He just appeared at the angel of the Lord and he led Joshua out. So he put that thing in there and that thing in there. And the King James Bible is right and your new Bibles are wrong. <laughs> All right. Now here, what, what have you got going along here? You've got going along here a physical literal kingdom. Not once here is the kingdom of God showing up at all. Not the kingdom of God. If Christ is God, where is his kingdom? That ain't his kingdom. War, 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 war. And it'll be wars clean across that page. Is that God's kingdom? God's kingdom is righteousness, peace, and peace, peace. Then you never saw it. It ain't here. <laughs> Lord, God, the funny way of dealing with people. I mean, Jesus is born way in a manger in the crib for his bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his head and the stars in the sky and out come the angels and sing, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. <laughs> you trying to pull my leg or something? <laughs> you tell me Christ was born, peace came. Sixty centuries of killing each other. And you got three of them coming up. You got three world wars on deck. One of them about the time of the rapture, and one of them uh, at Armageddon, and a third one at the end of the millennium. Yeah, right, but the angel says, on earth, peace on earth, goodwill to man. Around comes Christmas. What do you see? Peace on earth, goodwill to man. Peace on earth, goodwill to man. Peace on earth, goodwill to man. And no peace. You didn't quote the first part of the verse. The first part of the verse said, glory to God in the highest. And if there's no glory to God in the highest, no peace and no goodwill to a man. Lock, 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 lock load and fire, buddy. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Why, when Christ came, all hell broke loose and has been broken loose ever since. And they're going to keep right on doing it. Why? You didn't give God the glory. You didn't go by the book. You took the parts you didn't like and put it out and then tried to live without, do without Christ. And you can't do it without Christ. Christ said, without me, you can do nothing. All right, now here we go. We come along. Here's uh, uh, Joshua. Joshua brings them out. Uh, gets them into the promised land. Now they're coming out as a nation. Now as a nation, they're conditional. As a nation, the Lord said, if you do this and do it right, then I'll bless you here and bless you here. And five of you will put 10,000 to flight, and I'll take care of your uh, uh, crops and give you the rain in due season. And I'll bless you. But if you don't, there's a whole chapter on it. And the whole chapter is Deuteronomy 32 and Deuteronomy 28. And in those chapters, he tells that Jew what I'm going to do to you if you don't obey as a nation. And what is described is the Holocaust that came out on Adolf Hitler. It even says furnace in the pastures. And he tells them what he's going to do with them if they disobey. And that's what he did with them. But it's temporary. It has to be because he's not going to break his promise to Abraham. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Well, along comes Joshua, and he gets them out. And then they become a nation. They become a nation. When they become a nation, then they have kings. Over what? A literal, physical, visible nation. What is it? It's the kingdom of heaven. Because heaven is literal, physical, and visible. So the nation is the kingdom of heaven is like this. You don't want to associate with the earth because it says heaven. But... The heavens are earthly. The earth is in the heavens. Like I keep telling you. All up he shows. And up he shows here. And the, and the first king that shows up, God recognizes, is David. Now, if there's a king before David, Saul. But God doesn't recognize him as a king. How do you know? Because when you get to Matthew and read Christ's genealogy, it lists all the kings. And the first time it says king, it says King David. And that Saul was before David. God doesn't list him. As a king. That's the one the people wanted. The people's choice. 
up shows David. And David shows up and God promises him this and promises him that. And, prom- and the Lord said, I won't, won't let you build my uh, temple and stuff because you're a man of blood. You've been a combat man. And I'm going to let your son build it, build it. So I'll let him build the temple, Solomon. Solomon, Salam, Salam, Shalom, peace unto you. He'll build it. And I'm going to give it to him. So when the Pharisees were talking with Christ, Christ says to him, he said, What, what, what think ye? He said, uh, who, whose son is, is, the, is the Messiah when he comes? And they all said, the son of David. And he said, if David called him son, then how come he called him Lord? The Lord said to my Lord. Would David call his own son Lord? A Jew call his boy Lord? Are you kidding? If the one thing the Orientals have, they honor their families. I, I, I take the circuit with the prisoners year after year, over 110 of them. And you'd be amazed how few Orientals are in those prisons. You can find plenty of blacks in there. You can find plenty of whites in there. But you know, there's a notable absence of Japanese and Chinese. Those people honor their ancestors. That's why they're so hard to win to Christ. If you win them to Christ, they've insulted their ancestors. So that's why it's very hard to win any of them. But that's what they've done. And those are the right people. And they said, the son of David. He said, why, no man would call his son Lord, unless what? <laughs> unless he was good, good, uh, the Lord's kid. And Christ is called, quote, the son of David. And if he's the son of David, then he's earthly as well as heavenly, so he could get both crowns. Amen. He can wear one crown as the son of man and one as the son of, son of God. So up shows David. And then after David, we have uh, Solomon. Why this man that ever lived? Why this man that ever lived? If you want wisdom, and you've got to be watch it there, um, because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Right. It isn't going off and come back eight or nine degrees. Some men die by degrees. I've got about five earned degrees, and let me sell. I, I believe what my maid told me one time. She said, if you ain't got no education, you just got to use your brains. That's what she said. <laughs> she said, law me, Dr. Robin, here you preach. One thinks think you didn't have no education at all. <laughs> said, you got a Ph.D.? I said, I got a Ph.D. That's a post hole digger. <laughs> That's what you got. Just because you got an education, that don't mean you got any brains. You might not, have, might not have a brain in your head. Amen. 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 Don't amen me. Amen myself. <laughs> Uh, what has he got here? He's got the kingdom of heaven. What is it? Earthly, physical, and liberal. He's a, a, a thing you get your hands on, physical. It's not spiritual. Well, right, you have Solomon, and then after that, you have a bunch of kings. And these are Hebrew kings. And they're in First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles. And every one is kingdom of a literal, physical, economic, political kingdom. Where the kingdom of God? It ain't there. It ain't there. 4,000 years and God not interfering. The one time he got so mad at him, he drowned them all out. But then when I came back in again, he swore I won't do it again. Next time I do it, it's going to be by fire. That's going to be up in here someplace. But you see, this is what you've got right here. What you've got right here is one king after another. And when they get down to about the last king, they have a king in there called Jeconiah. And as you can see from Jeconiah, this will be in Chronicles, and it'll be in Kings, Jeconiah, like that. And that bird holds up, and there's that J-E, Jehovah. And God got mad at that king and said, I'm not going to call him Je- Jeconiah anymore. I'm just going to call him Coniah. And he broke that out in the King James Bible. Mistake, that ain't no mistake. The God said, I'm, I'm tired of hearing that, and I won't let him use my name. So his name is Kaniah. And that fellow is so bad, the Lord said, I'm going to throw him off the, off the king, I'm going to take a crown away from him, and throw it off, and nobody can sit anymore on the throne of David after Kaniah. If you're from the king's line, you can't get on the throne of Israel. And when Christ shows up, he's in the king's line. It's a tough book. Turn to Matthew 1. Turn to Matthew 1. What you're looking at is the greatest argument for the virgin birth that's in the Bible. And nobody picked it up. 
Anybody that comes from that line right there cannot get on the throne. That's what he said. No man from his seed can prosper sitting on the throne of David. And when what happens, the next king comes along here. I crossed out his name as Zedekiah. And Zedekiah gets them squashed by Nebuchadnezzar. And uh, they go in the captivity getting ready for a man like, name like this. And when they get ready for him, he gets ready for him in 606. That's Nebuchadnezzar. And after that, nobody can prosper on the throne. Now look, turn to, to, uh, to Matthew chapter 1. Look at that list of kings there. Look at that king. The first one is the, the king David. Now look, now look down. Well, what verse is that uh, in chapter 1? David. Six. 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 Now look at verse 7, 8, 9, 10. They're all those kings. And they come down and God said, back here, none of them can get on the throne. And when Christ comes in, you know who his mama is? She is from David. Her list is in Luke chapter, her, her, her genealogy is in Luke. In Matthew, the genealogy is to Joseph. Or you come to Joseph, isn't Joseph in that list you're reading? Where is he? Should be at the end of the list. 16. 16, read it for me. Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who was called Christ. Well, he can't get on the throne because he's from the line God said couldn't get on the throne. And he got on the throne. Then Joseph couldn't have been his daddy. You got you a hot rod. You haven't got no ordinary book sitting there, you lot boy. That thing will burn your hands, boy. Well, right, that's what happens right there. Up it shows. And in the interim, here before here, there's no king of there's no kingdom of heaven, there's no kingdom of God. What is it? What we call, we call this the times of the Gentiles. And that's the middle of your Bible, and the time of the Gentiles is the uh, book of uh, Daniel, the book of Ezekiel, the book of uh, Zedekiah. Those are the prophets when Israel is in captivity. And though they're all in captivity through that place through 600 B.C., and they come down there 500 B.C., and they come down there 400 B.C., coming down through there like that. Uh, 600, 500, 500 and 400 coming down. B.C., that's before Christ. And they're in captivity all that time. And in the middle of that captivity, up shows a fellow called Daniel. And up shows Daniel, and he begins to prophesy and say, What you prophesying, man? He said, I'm by prophesying a time when thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And God's going to run this earth like he would in heaven. In plain of words, both kingdoms are coming in. Amen. And when Daniel has that dream, he has a dream about all these kingdoms coming along and all getting knocked out. And the stone from heaven, not made with hands, comes down and hits the image and blows the times of the Gentiles all to pieces and finishes them. And then he said that stone became a great mountain that filled all the earth. That's the kingdom. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So here's the fellow prophesying the thing, you know, 600 years before Christ is born. You got a Bible? Turn to Daniel. And Bob, Brother Peacock, if you would read us Daniel chapter uh, 2, I guess. 2, it looks like a 35, but I can't. 235, I think. It's on the image. And on the image there, he's, he's explaining that stone that comes down. Read us that passage right there. Thou sawest till the stone was cut without hand, which smote the image upon his feet. Stop just a minute. Just stop just a minute. See the stone? Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Go ahead. Upon the feet that were of iron and clay, and break them in pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, the gold, broken to pieces together. It became like chaff of the summer threshing floors. The wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that was smoked, the image, became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. It became a great mountain and filled the earth? Well, then it became, it became a kingdom. There's been kingdom he's talking about there. That image he's talking about there, that head is the kingdom of Babylon. Then comes the king of Persia. Then comes the king of Greece. Then the king comes of Rome. And then down comes that thing and tears up and becomes a big kingdom and covers the whole thing. 
Now you want to see that happen? Turn to the last book in your Bible and get Revelation chapter Revelation chapter uh, uh, 12, I think. Uh, near the end of the chapter. Revelation chapter 12. And I want something there. Um, Brother uh, Peacock, if you would, me, see if I know where I'm at. Read me about verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. The devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth he has... All right, skip a couple of corrupt verses and read them. Skip a couple of verses and read me some more. The woman were given two wings of great eagles... All right, skip a few more. I want a seventh trumpet blown. Is that in chapter 12? 11? Is it an 11? I missed the, I missed, must have missed the chapter. 11 what? The seventh angel, 11, 15, the seventh angel sounded. There we go, that's what I want. The, saying, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and Whoa. of His Christ. Whoa, stop. What did you just read, man? <laughs> you read the kingdoms. Earthly, literal, visible, political kingdoms are become what? The kingdoms of our, of, this war, of our Lord. Jesus Christ. Amen. Finish it. And of his Christ, and he shall reign forever. Oh, that's a, there's the king. And when he comes, he's going to reign forever. And he's got both the crowns. Amen. And that's... Go ahead. If you want to... <laughs> And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power there you and go. hast reigned. Reigns, the king. That's Christ coming back. Prophesied in uh, about uh, 590 B.C. before he's, 500 years before he's born. And when he comes back, he comes as king of the earth, a physical, literal kingdom, kingdom of heaven, and he comes back as God's kingdom, peace, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And when that, the angels sang when that baby was born, that's what they were singing about. If they had trust Christ, it would have come. They didn't trust Christ, they killed him, so the Lord took that thing and put it forward past the year 2014. And that's what we're waiting for. We're waiting for the king to show up. Right, you know what the world's waiting for? They're waiting for their king to show up. That's right. That's right. And they're getting ready. Yeah. Don't you didn't shoot that passion Daniel on the Antichrist where it said he didn't desire the, didn't desire the, 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 the uh, wish for women? Yeah. He's a queer. Right. You know how you know he's a queer? As it was in the days of Lot. What's the days of Lot? That's the days of the Tower of Babel. The first time the Tower of Lot, the Tower of Babel is mentioned is Genesis 11, and Lot is mentioned in 11 before Sodom and Gomorrah burn. Lot shows up in Genesis 11, and 11 the tower is going up, and they're all going to get one and get together in the Tower of Babel. And those days, those days, the days of Lot, the Antichrist shows up. So what the world is doing here right now is making an international issue out of sex perversion. Right. Amen. 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 Why did you, you really realize how crazy you have to be to even think about that thing? Yeah. Yes. I mean, what if a guy said, came to me and said, I want to marry this fellow here. <laughs> I'd say, run on, I've got more things to do, buddy. Right. I wouldn't make a national political issue out of it. Amen. Boy, somebody, you talk about being cuckoo, man. They're really, they're really, they're really gone. I saw one, one down downtown, I gave a little tractor lady downtown and said, uh, Ma'am, could I give you this? And he said, I'm not a ma'am. I'm, I'm a man. I said, well, you could have fooled me. I said, uh, I said what, what do you want long hat hair, hair, hair cut out in the middle of his back? And I said, what do you, what do you want to look, look like a woman for? He said, well, I'm a man, you better believe it. I said, I didn't say you weren't. I just said, what do you want to look like a woman for? He said, well, if you don't think I'm a man, just try me for a size. I said, are you deaf? I said, what do you want to look like a woman for? He never told me. Never told me. I don't guess he was a man or a woman. I guess he was a thing from outer space or something. I don't know. 
back in the old days when they turned around, you could tell what they were, you know. But these days they turn around, you still don't know what you're looking at. <laughs> man, man, I preached in jails here in the last in the last week, and then every other the 15 years I've been, every every one I put in jails where they came in, I said to the guy, "What are they doing here? This this for all women, isn't it?" And the guard said, "Yeah, they're all women." I said, "Look at those three over there, not those men." He said, "No, they're women." I said, "They couldn't be women." I mean, some already had a mustache there. <laughs> Honest to God, a real enough mustache. They got no breasts, and they got this thing here, and then they say, you got to say more to them, and they say, good morning. <laughs> 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 well, listen, you're living in a nut house, man. He said, we sent them through a shower before they get through here, so we know for sure what they are. <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> That's what I like that. Well, that, well, that fellow, uh, what was his name? He got died recently. Uh, the other guy, he wasn't a man, he wasn't a woman, he wasn't black, and he wasn't white. I don't know what he was. <laughs> what, what, what was that guy's name? <laughs> yeah, that's the guy right there. <laughs> That'd make you believe in out of his face, sending people <laughs> down here. All right, there we go. Now that's prophecy. Now what, what happens to prophecy? Well, the years go by and the years go by and the years go by. And they go by and then one day, boy, one day, one of the night, uh, a voice shows up. It's a, a voice that nobody ever heard before. And it's old John the Baptist. And old John the Baptist says, make straight the path of the Lord, make straight for his way. Here he comes. And that's found in, J J in Isaiah chapter 40 more than 800 years before he's born. And he comes along there and Christ comes down and to be baptized and old John says, I've got need to be baptized to you. I shouldn't baptize you. You ought to baptize me. And Christ said, thus it behooves to, to, to fulfill all things. What are you saying? He's saying, uh, I'm going to take the place of a sinner and you're baptizing sinners, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I'm taking the place of a sinner. Put me under. And he takes him down there and puts him under. He comes up. And old John says, Behold the Lamb of God that beareth away the sin of the world. What does he come in? He comes in as King of God, and he comes in as King of Heaven. But when he's on earth, they're both there. So in one, one, one pa passage in one of your Matthew, Mark, Luke, John said, John says, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And the other one, he says, The kingdom of God is at hand. And they never got it figured out yet. They say, Well, they must be uh, different, but they're the same. Now they're never the same, Amen. but they're there at the same time when the author is there. And when he goes, what are them crowns going to go with him? Amen. It happened right back there. It's going to happen right back up here. There's going to be a different crown this time. Here you get through. Here comes John. Along he goes, and you know the story. The story is uh, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And when it says it takes away the sin, he takes away the sin of the world. It means all your sins are gone, they're all forgiven, and God reconciled you, you to himself by dying for your sins, and reconciled you to him and him to you, and if you take Christ your Savior, you can be a man, and you can be a, the, the Lord inside you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. The trouble is we're only half saved. See, that's the problem. When Christ is born, he's born sinless physical and sinless uh, spiritual. When he dies, his body doesn't rot. That's an ax. He did not see corruption. In the three days, the body laid up here didn't, didn't fall apart. Your, your will. You see this thing right here? It hadn't been saved. Now, I'm saved, but not the, what you're looking at. You see these dumb Americans think when you look at the body, you're looking at the man. You ain't looking at the man. You know. You never seen me a day in your life. Amen. I never seen you a day in your life. Amen. You're in behind there looking out at me. Amen. Right, buddy? Sure, man. <laughs> I ain't looking at you what I body, I'm not seeing you. That's the cage you run around in. <laughs> you know you know what the greatest Christian that ever lived said? He said, hey, I, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? That's the greatest Christian that ever lived. What's the trouble? I only got half saved. <laughs> my soul saved. My body isn't saved. It's going to put me to bed with a shovel. <laughs> and you too. Amen. And you too. Now ain't that a mess? 
I got it. I had it figured out when I was 28, and I don't feel any different right now than that. When I was 28, I'd had enough. And I often think when I preach in these jails, I often think about it. I preach in these jails, and I think, could it be that I lived worse life than these fellows lived? I remember double lifers there and everything else, and the serial killers. They must not live as bad as I lived. Because when I got to be 28 the way I lived, I didn't want to live anymore. I, bet, I tell those prisoners, I bet some of you guys, when you get out of here, you're going to mess up again. Yeah. I've been to some places in the last 15 years where I've seen the same guy three times in three different jails. <laughs> what, is, what, what, what is the fellow? Some of you young people haven't had enough yet? Got to have some more? Amen. Well, boys and girls, when I was 28, I'd had all the women and all the men and all the liberal, liberal stuff and all the medals and all the honors and all the way to write poetry and paint and make music and play three different instruments I wanted. I was through and I didn't want to go another step. You couldn't interest me in going out the door to stop to see what was there. I'd seen enough at 28. And at 28 I was on the verge of blowing my brains out just that quick and it was only God Almighty that gave me a break and gave me a chance to be saved. I'd never, never heard the gospel. And boy, the first time I've heard the gospel, I was on the fourth row of an old country church. And when they began to sing, Just as I am without one plea, I didn't I, I was out of that chair before he could sing the stanza. Amen. Amen. You say, why? I'd had enough. Amen. I'm not interested anymore. Amen. I'm that way right now. I don't care what's outside that door. I wouldn't walk 15 feet to see it. Amen. What? Anything. <laughs> I've seen enough. I want to go home. <laughs> I told my preacher, well, there's something God can't do. And he said, oh, well, that's heresy. No, he said, I know he can't do it. He said, what is that? He can't come too soon for me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, if he came right now, I'd uh, accuse him of being a little bit late. <laughs> Did you ever sing it? This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't be in this mess anymore. <laughs> but here I am. <laughs> okay, there's John bringing him in. There's Jesus. And Jesus comes along and dies for your sins. A man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. We hid our face from him. Boon for our transgress, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes you're healed. How, what does he die? You know what the man says? The man, man says, the son of man, I thirst. You know what the son of man says? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You know what the son of God said? I know thou always hear me. Thou always hear me, for I heavenly father. That one that says, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That's a man going through hell. That's what they say in hell. You forsook me. You dumped me there and left me there. I thirst. That's what the rich man in hell said. Send Lazarus and dip the tip of his finger in and come out to water. Don't you see what's going on there? When he's dying for your sins, he's paying for your sins like you're going to pay for them in hell if you take some other way. Amen. I, 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 I work on the prisons with this. It isn't because I'm trying to be mean. It's because I know how they think. I got kind of a, I got kind of a you know, a, a, a unlawful mind myself. You know, I have a terrible time with it. I was raised, my mentors were uh, uh, little, uh, well, Bonnie and Clyde and Al Capone <laughs> and I, that bunch. I, I like I liked the, the, the bank robbers best. John Dillinger, Jesse James. I thought they were great people. Because <laughs> I always thought banks were crooked. Now I know they're crooked. <laughs> but I can't go after them. <laughs> That, that kind of thing, going through that thing, you get through kind of thing, and you get, I get a place where I'm just worn out with sin, and I want to get home, and I don't know where home is. I went to an empty church in the night before I got saved, in the rain, shoes not tied up, drunk for three days, headed for hell. I went in there, went to that place, and there was nobody in there, and I went, started down the aisle, and about that time, a voice said, you crazy nuts, you're losing your mind, go back out. And I went back out, pouring down rain down there. I started back in, and the Lord said, if you don't find Christ tonight, you're never going to find him. And I started down the aisle again, and I got scared and went back out. That, that aisle looked like it was 50 miles long. It was only about as long as that one right there. Nobody was in the auditorium. I was by myself, drunk. 
and running at night, just trying to find something. I'm, I know I'm going to hell and I don't know how to get out of it. I never argue with the Lord. Some of you folks, you must put up a terrible argument when you don't come down that aisle. Amen. But boy, the first time I ever heard the gospel, I was down that aisle for you. And you couldn't finish the first stanza. I must have lived an awful bad life. If you can afford not to come down, boy, I couldn't. But that night I went in there alone. I went down there finally. I went down and dropped my knees down there. I timed it later. I was there 20 minutes. While I was in there, they had a choir practice in the back room. It was a Methodist church. And I knew the song because of this jockey and played hymns on Sunday on the radio. And I remembered the words. Should my tears forever flow? Should my zeal no longer know? All for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. In my hand no price I bring. Simply thy cross I cling. I can remember that. And I prayed, but I couldn't. All I knew was Hail Mary and our Father, you know. Twiddle the weeds and all that stuff, you know. Hail Mary, full of grapes. Blessed be the fruit of the loom, you know. All that kind of stuff. So I kneeled down there praying, and I said, Lord, I'm tired. I'm so oh, damn tired. I'm tired of walking. I'm tired of running. I've been shot out. I've been cussed out. I've been lied about. I've been freezing. I've been boiling. I, I, I have nothing to live for. I want to go home. I don't know where home is. I never had a home. I came home for meals and sleeping. I never had a home. Wherever, wherever I came from, God, would you take me back where I came from? I don't know how to pray. And I know what I was saying. I said it. I said, if I've got a home, I'd like to come home. I had never even heard of him. They're singing softly and telling Jesus is calling, calling, oh sinner, come home. <laughs> On the prodigal son, boy. And man, I got up from that thing and went home that night to go to bed. And the devil said, go on and go to bed and see a doctor in the morning. You're crazy. <laughs> I went home and got to bed. Flop house, 10 cents a bed to can to spit in. And the family all tore up and no job and a dollar, dollar an hour. And I got back there and then the Lord began to deal with me. And boy, the next day, a little old country preacher came into that place where I was. Radio, W-A-E-R, came in there. And he came and began to preach. And the Lord said, now you said, fell in there. He said, he said, well, you talk to him when he comes out. And the devil said, well, that little fellow, he don't know nothing. That little shrimp, he, he's smaller than you are, man. He can't do, tell you anything. And uh, the Lord said, you don't think that's a man. Check him when he comes out. I said, well, I looked at him. Out. Shoot, he doesn't drink nothing stronger than buttermilk. And he got up and went out. I said, hi, preacher, what do you know? And he turned around and said, I know the Lord Jesus Christ. What do you know? Oh, that's the way to break up a day for a guy. <laughs> and I said, well, I don't know him. He said, would you like to know him? And I said, sure. And he said, well, what are you waiting for? I thought, well, you dumb nut. What am I waiting for? I'm 28. I've got three degrees. Been overseas back about four times and studied the tri -tip, tri a triple bas basket from Buddha and studied the Koran about through 17 times now and the Persian stuff and the Tao and the Buddha stuff. What do you mean, what am I waiting for? And he said, well, come here. And he took me back in the record room. He took out a Bible and he said, do you believe this is the Word of God? I said, yeah, I do. And I did. I didn't know anything about it. But the Catholic Church said it was. And I was going to the Catholic Church. So I said, yeah, it is. And he said, do you know you're a sinner? I said, oh, yeah, sure, I know I'm a sinner. And he said, well, well, would you uh, be willing to pray and ask Christ to save you? And I said, uh, sure, sure, I'll, I'll do that. He said, give me your hand. I took his hand. I took his hand and he said, now go on and pray. And I said, I don't know how to pray. And I didn't. I knew Hail Mary and our Father, you know, twiddle the bees, our Father, child in heaven, how be named, came, blah, 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 blah. I knew about that, but I didn't know how to pray. And he said, well, just in your own words, he said, in your own words, he said, Christ, Christ, uh, uh, Christ, Christ died just in your own words, ask Christ to save you. Now, if he knew how I was going to pray, he wouldn't have said that. <laughs> because the guy came up like I came up through. I mean, I came up with a sewer boy. I learned my dirty songs from my mother when I was four and five and six years old. How to play five card draw and seven card stud, watch them gamble in the front room. I'm running away down to the French Quarter in New Orleans when I'm 17 years old and you come up like that, it isn't like that. You don't, you don't talk nice. Every word's a four-letter word. And so I cussed all the way through the prayer. <laughs> I was praying to ask God to save me. I said, God save me pretty blankety-blank quick or I'm going to hell sure as blankety-blank-blank. 
<laughs> Save my soul for Christ's sake. Uh, amen. <laughs> and he said, you mean that prayer? I said, you're blanket of blank right I meant that prayer. <laughs> And I said, what are you grinning about? He said, nothing. Uh, uh, now that you prayed that prayer, did you mean that prayer? I said, sure, I meant that prayer. He said, well, if you did, you know you're saved. I said, no, I don't. He said, yes, you do. I said, I do not. He said, you do. So I said, I don't either. And I was getting a little hairy there for a minute. And he reached in and pulled out a Bible and read to me and said, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life. God, God says there, now no, you know. Now do you know or don't you? Man, I, I, he had to be between a rock and a hard place, man. I couldn't say I knew I was saved. I didn't feel nothing. And I said, well, uh, well, uh, I guess I'm saved. Does he say guess or no? I read it and said no, K-N-O-W. He said, no, do you know you're saved? Well, uh, and he said, you don't think God's a liar, do you? I said, no, 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 don't think God's a liar. Well, are you saved or aren't you? Well, I had to say something to get rid of him, man. I couldn't. <laughs> uh, so I said, yeah, I'm saved. <laughs> and felt like I wasn't. <laughs> but I was. Amen. I meant the prayer. Amen. Now, I may have put it kind of funny kind of way and heard it for a good while, but I meant that prayer. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. And asked me, asked me if I wouldn't uh, confess Christ my Savior. And I said, yes, I confess Christ my Savior. He said, would you afraid, be afraid to do it publicly? And I said, no, I wouldn't be afraid to do it publicly. And he said, all right, come out to my church next uh, Sunday and, and confess Christ. I said, I'll do it. So I went out there and they sang, Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood is shed for me, that thy bids me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. And like I told you, I didn't wait for two stanzas. Not me. I must have known some, some, some of you don't know. You give invitations there all the time. Your pastor asks you forward. And the people here get saved, but they don't come forward. You must, you must not think. You, must, you, must, you couldn't have been as bad as I was. If you like I was, boy, you'd know a good thing if you saw it. Amen. And buddy, when a man got up before me and said, I'll forgive you and won't hold it against you and put you in heaven and won't cost you a dime, let me at it, boy. I'm, I'll be climbing over beaches to get to it, boy. You must be thinking you're a lot better than you think you are. Amen. Must be. Why, what happens? You know what happens. He dies on the cross for your sins. He's buried. He rose again the third day from the dead. Then after that, old Simon Peter gets up and says, repent and believe on the Jesus Christ. And he doesn't know anything about uh, New Testament Christianity and getting saved. Uh, Peter and John were with Christ for three and a half years. And when the resurrection came, they went into the, uh, in the tomb and were astonished because they couldn't find him and couldn't understand it. They'd been, he'd been, he, they'd been with him for three and a half years and didn't believe in the resurrection. Isn't that something? When Peter gets up and says, repent and get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, he's not giving you what you're getting right now from Paul. It wasn't revealed to him. He still thought of baptism connected with uh, salvation. Why? Because John the Baptist had. And when that Holy Spirit came down, he said, get baptized and get the Holy Ghost. You will remember, told, and you know it never were told in a Pauline epistle anywhere that you had to get baptized to get the Holy Ghost. Amen. He said in the book of Galatians, you receive the Holy Spirit by faith. But that's revealed later. It isn't revealed in Acts 2. So Acts 2, there's preaching one thing in Acts 3 and Acts 4. And finally Stephen gets up. And I've got a spell wrong there, I can't see it. But that's Stephen. And Stephen gets up to preach and he gets up. You know what he does? He goes right slap back to there. Hearken, brethren. Our father, the Lord came to our father Abraham at night and said, Get thee up from your place and come to the place I'll show thee of. And I, he went clear through again like that. Yes, and boy, when he got then, that thing came down, the parishions, those fellows were sitting there and sitting there. And about that time up in heaven, the Lord was up there at the right hand of God. The Bible says he was. And he got up. Amen. And when Stephen looks up like that and they're stoning him, I see the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. What's he doing standing? What's he doing standing? A bunch of dumb uh, 
a theologian, they say he's getting up to come down to get Stephen's soul. Are you crazy? Do you think Jesus Christ gets up and comes down here to get every Christian that dies to get his soul? Well, be jumping up down like a jumping jack, man. <laughs> you get, you get, get down about 20 of them an hour right along. What's he standing up for? He's about to come back. Yeah. Why didn't he come back? They rejected him. Now, if that crowd of there had, recept, had accepted him, you know what, what would happen? No, no New Testament would have ever been written. The whole Bible would have been Genesis to Malachi. The, 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 you keep reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you think that all happened. No, that's all, that stuff was written years and years after Acts 2. There wasn't any Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, you read them that way, but that didn't happen that way in history. If they'd accepted him, the Lord would have come back. Gabriel had blown the trumpet. And old uh, Antichrist, who just hung himself, son of perdition, that's what Christ called him, son of perdition, he'd have come up from the grave and assumed the Antichrist, and the Jews would, were saved, would get caught up in a rapture, and the, and the tribulation would begin. Yeah. Say, Robin, how you talk? Well, if I'm talking wrong, how do you explain John the Baptist saying, the kingdom of heaven is nigh, the kingdom of heaven is near, the kingdom of heaven is on, it was right at the doorstep. When Christ comes to Jerusalem, he's on a mule, see? That's a king coming in. That's how he'll come in when he comes. When he comes in, they're saying, Hail to the Savior, glory to God of the highest. That's what will happen when he comes in the second time. Amen. It's all right there. Amen. If they'd accepted him, that'd have been the end of the Bible, and that'd have been the Antichrist showing up, and the rapture right there. No church, no New Testament, but they turn him down. Stephen comes down there, and he's one of these vulgar, horrible, hard you know, red redneck crackers, and he comes on there and says, How be it the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hand to say at the prophet, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool, as your kingdom. He said about those things. He said, Heaven is my, what, what house will you build me, or my place of rest? You stiff-necked and uncircumcised and heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did so to you. You've been this and that and so forth, so the prophets, and you haven't kept the law, and you've sinned against God. Bam! Every head bowed, every eye shut. <laughs> they're cussing, and they're picking up rocks, and they're killing him. And he goes on the hail of rocks and says, Lord, lay not say this is the sin of the charge. And they say, what, 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 what are you, what's he doing? He says, I see the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Amen. Bam! Off he goes to be with God, and then all hell breaks loose, and you're in the church age. And the people in the church age don't even know they're there until Paul shows up and God reveals the mystery to him. Amen. And that's what Ephesians 3 is about, the whole chapter. Amen. And it's not revealed to Peter, James, and John. It's revealed to them after these things take place. And Peter said he spent two weeks with Paul talking about this thus before they got together on it. That's in Galatians chapter 1 and chapter 2. When they got together, they had a conference. That's Acts chapter 15. And when they come out, they're all preaching what Paul preaches. By grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. But they had to get together in Acts 15. And until then, my God, people, there are five ways to get saved in the book of Acts. Five different ways till they get the thing settled. One bunch has to get the Holy Spirit by getting baptized. Another bunch got saved, they said, and got baptized, and they couldn't get the Holy Spirit until somebody laid hands on them. You got another place where the fellows listen to the message, get saved while he's listening to the message, and doesn't have to have the hands or the baptism. You have three of them that get saved without talking in tongues. The first, the first man in history, according to that book, that got saved the way you're saved, by grace, through faith, with nothing, no, nothing that added to it, is an Ethiopian eunuch from Africa. Amen. Amen. You know how he gets saved? By reading Isaiah 14, where God, where, or Isaiah 53, where the Lord is describing the crucifixion. And when Philip gets in the, uh, in the, in the uh, little car with him, he says, is this, he talking about himself or some other man? And Philip's reading Isaiah 53, Wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities, he took this passage and preached Jesus to him. That old boy got saved, and after he got saved, he said, Is it okay to get baptized now? Yeah, you're already saved. Amen. Amen. The first man in that book saved, but grace through faith, the way you're saved, is an African from Ethiopia. That's right. Amen. 
You know what that to show you? It shows that you, Eddie, if you ever got saved, you are not your own. You are bought. Shekel, baby. Bought for a price. What does that mean? It means you're a slavery. Amen. Who? You nice white folks. <laughs> Go to the church of your choice. Never do that. <laughs> A slave doesn't choose his church. His master chooses his church. Right. Ruckman, do you prefer the King James Bible? No, I don't prefer the King James Bible. I prefer the King James Bible because that's the one that God told me to take. Amen. He's the master. I'm to do what I'm told to do. Right. Amen. 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 When you get that, you'll have someone here color. All right, there they are. Up they come. And here's old Stephen. What do they do? Well, they knock, they burn, blah, 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 knock his stones out with stones, head out with stones, and that's the end of it. And when that thing got, got, happens, you know what happens? That's the nation of Israel officially, officially rejecting their Messiah. So out goes the keys to the kingdom of heaven. The literal, physical kingdom goes. So they say to Jesus, Will thou at this time restore the kingdom? Meaning what? The physical one that you lost back there. And he said, it's not for you to know the time and the seasons. I said, it's going to come, but you're not going to know about it. Get busy and start witnessing. So you're to witness till it comes. We're going to close now and turn to John chapter, I want John 19, if I get these right. John 19, no, 18. 18, uh, 36. John 18, 36. Now here's what happened before Pilate. And this shows you that the literal, physical, visible kingdom of Christ is coming. And when he comes, he comes with an army. And it's, it's, it's all balanced on one word, which the new Bibles leave out. Brother, read us that passage, Brother Keith, up Peacock. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. Stop just a minute. My kingdom is not of this world. Right. Then it isn't the visible, visible kingdom. Go ahead. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from him. But what? Now is not my kingdom. Now it's not my people getting ready to battle and you knock your head off. Right. It's going to be later. Amen. So all the new Bibles take out the word now, so he won't ever come back later with the truth right. and rebel. And he's going to Armageddon. Yes, right. You're going to kill 200 million of them. Now, see that thing? Read it for it again to clear the whole thing. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Then it's going to be. The stone's going to fill the whole earth. Amen. One more reference, Revelation. And Revelation, I want that passage there that says uh, uh, that seventh trumpet blew that you had. And... Uh, uh, the judgment took place, and something else there. What, what was that? Revelation what? 11.15. 11.15. Read it for us. The seventh angel sounded. There were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord. Whoa, whoa, boy, what did you read just then? Read it again for us. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. There's both kingdoms together. The kingdom of our Lord is Jesus Christ. And they're the king of this world. And he's the, obviously he's the king of kings. And obviously he's the king of the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And that's Christ. Amen. So when he shows up uh, on this earth at the end of the tribulation, battle of Armageddon... Battle of Armageddon, he brings his army with him. And from there, from here on, after Stephen talks, you have nothing on this earth here but the kingdom of God. At the rapture, out goes the kingdom of God. And the Antichrist takes over. And the end of Antichrist's reign, back comes Jesus Christ and 1,000 years of peace and called the millennium. And that 1,000 there, you know what you have there? You have the Son of Man there sitting at that table, and he's head of the king of the physical kingdom, and you have the Son of God sitting there, the spiritual kingdom, and the picture of that is Christ dying from the dead, 
dying and then coming up from the dead and coming into the table and sitting down with the apostles and there they are human in the human garb eating and there he is supernaturally eating with them. The supernatural man with the natural man at the same time. So in the millennium there are people still being born and dying of natural and there are others there that are like him, like Christ, and are never going to die. That's going to be you. Amen. Beloved, it doth not yet appear what we shall be, what we know. He shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is, and every man that is hath faith in himself is pure, even as he is pure. Amen. Now, look, did you ever look in the mirror and look at and try to figure that sucker out you're looking at in the mirror? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm by nature, I'm suspicious of people. I'm really, I'm, really, I'm, I'm suspicious of every, everything. I still, I still, I don't want to sit and eat with my back to a window, ever, or a door. When I get in elevators at night, and somehow, I'm, 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 I preach in Frisco and Vegas at 12 o'clock at night and come in late at night and get in the, uh, the, the, the elevator there and a couple of big bucks get in beside me, you know, at about 12 o'clock at night. And I just instinctively get in the corner where they can't get on both sides. <laughs> And then I just instinctively just relax this way so I can pop up in a minute. <laughs> See, you crazy fool, I know it's crazy. I've never been jumped yet. <laughs> but if I do, they're going to be surprised. <laughs> I mean, I get up in the morning, look in the mirror, and I say, now, what are you up to now? <laughs> I can't imagine myself looking into a mirror and saying, well, Peter, old boy, today... You can think anything you want to think all day long and say anything you want to say all day long to anybody and do anything you want to do and never have to worry about whether it's right or wrong. Wow, man. <laughs> if that ain't heaven, what is? Listen, if you're a glutton, for goodness sake, get to heaven, will you? <laughs> I mean, when Christ, when Christ comes up in the dead, he says, you got any stuff to hear eat? Yeah, fish and a honeycomb. He says, give them to me, chomp, 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 eat them up. What for? He had a body to just walk through a closed door. Do you need food to walk through another closed door? Listen, before he came to see you, he'd gone through down the heart of the earth and taken the Old Testament saints and taken them out through 12,000 miles of ignis and metamorphic rock, and he has to eat to stay alive? What became that food when he ate alive? Now, to speak reverently, did he go to the bathroom? Well, you ever think about those things? He ate the stuff and didn't have to eat it. He just ate it just to show them that he was real. Now, you realize what that means? That means <laughs> if you love watermelon, <laughs> you could sit down there and just stuff yourself full and never gain a pound and never have to go to the bathroom. Don't miss heaven. <laughs> Don't miss heaven. <laughs> well, if you miss heaven, you, now you, I know it sounds funny, but it's true. You're going to get a body like his. It went through shut doors, just like that. It went the heart of the earth and back up. If he got up there and got back down, he had to come back up at the speed of light and become visible and visible at will. What do you need to eat for? He didn't need to eat for. Let's just want to taste something good. Man, <laughs> don't miss it, don't miss it. <laughs> All right, here's the Antichrist up. He shows I don't have time to talk to you about him. And after Antichrist comes a thousand years of reign on this earth. And then of all things, oh, the devil comes out of the, has a battle there at the end, for which he loses. And then you step out here and you have the white throne judgment. And the white throne judgment is the last judgment of the unsaved dead. And that's uh, over there in chapter 20. Uh, and then that thing he says, I saw before heaven and earth uh, passed away and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were opened. And the dead were judged out of those things written in the books according to their works. And who was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And who was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. And the heaven and the hell were there. They, were received people, and they came out, and they went up to the, and they went up to the uh, 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 went into a lake of fire. He says, "Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire." That's what he says toward the end. 
and that I, then you have what the heaven and the earth passed away and melted with a fervent heat. Brother, turn to go to Second Peter and give me chapter three. He's going to tell you what's going to happen. Second Peter chapter three, and that'll be I think verse begin at verse uh, thirteen, thirteen to fifteen. Second Peter three, thirteen to fifteen. Read it for us, brother. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found in him in peace, without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to wisdom given unto uh, given unto him, hath written unto you. Well, I gave me two verses before it. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Well, then I've got it right. Make it four verses. <laughs> but the day of the Lord will come as Here we go. Of the night, Here we go. In which the heavens shall pass away with a yeah. great noise. Stop. Heavens pass away. That physical stuff. Here, this is the Big Bang. <laughs> go ahead and read a little further. <laughs> oh, yeah. Read some more. Noise. What? Great noise. That's the big bang. And At the, the end, not the beginning. Go ahead. And the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. There you go. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. There you go. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be all in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. There it is. Amen. About the elements being dissolved and melting, that's before the white throne judgment. Heaven are passed away, and I saw a great white throne. After that judgment, what do you have? A new heavens, and you have a new earth. Who gets the new earth? I'll give you one guess. And it's so strong that in Romans he said that the, the promise to give Abraham his land was the world. I bet you missed that one. It's in, in, in Romans. That's why the Gentiles hate him. That's going to be the winner. He's going to get the earth, the new earth. The Jews going to get it. Let's make a Catholic and a, a Muslim crazy. The new earth. That's the new earth. Now who gets the uh, new Jerusalem? Why, that body of Christ. Uh, John says, I saw New Jerusalem descend from heaven as a bride prepared for her husband. Amen. So you and us, we go to the capital of the universe. We go to Jerusalem where Jesus is king. You say, who is king down here? And uh, who is king down here on earth? The descendants of David. He said he'd give them to him forever. And what's that? That is Buck Rogers, 25th century... <laughs> And, uh, and, and the force is with you. <laughs> They're going to be inhabited. Outer space is going to be inhabited, but with the right kind of folk. Amen. Amen. God just take a little period there, 7,000 years to fix things up. It didn't hold him down. Look at here. What do you suppose would happen if that had gone on? How, how, how many people saw on this earth would be if they hadn't fallen and Eve could have painless childbirth. Painless childbirth and no wars and no sickness and no disease. How many people would be on this earth? Why, there'd be 25,000 of them per square inch on this earth. They never would die. A woman could have 12 children a year with no pain and never die. And it happened for how many years? No end of the years. Forever. You think I'm just talking, don't you? <laughs> Let's see if I am. Uh, turn to Isaiah 9. Let's see if I'm just talking. And I promise you this is the last one I'll give you. If I've got it right. Isaiah, come think of it, it's not 9 here. I've got here. What have I got here? I haven't got it here. I got, yeah, Isaiah 9. I want to think of whose name it should be called, uh, Father, so forth and so on. His name? What is it? 
9-6. Nine, 9-6. Six. Uh, nine, six. All right, read, read real slow. We're going to close on this one. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Of the what? The increase of his government and did, peace. Did you say increase? Yes, sir. Something without end as it increases? Go ahead. The increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Peace? There's that peace to a man of good will. Go ahead. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it. There's that kingdom. Whose kingdom? Whose kingdom? David's kingdom. Didn't say David? All right. Literal, physical, visible, economic kingdom. There it is. That's the kingdom of this earth. Thy will be done as it is in heaven. Christ down there to earth. Now you've got God's will. There's God's kingdom of God. You've got Christ's will. That's the will of man. That's, down. That's the kingdom of man. That's the kingdom of earth. Go ahead, finish it. To establish it with judgment and just with justice from henceforth even forever. How long? Forever. What, what, what is how long? <laughs> forever. But what is it that's anywhere there is doing that? What, what's, but it's going to increase, isn't it? It's the government. It's a physical, literal government that increases forever. That's why that stuff's out there. Yeah. They're going to be, it's going to be space travel someday, but not this bunch of lazy, God-hating, Bible-hating, sex-crazy right. monkeys. God's going to have the thing right when it goes. If they had increased like they could have, they'd been off this earth a long time ago. Amen. They'd take the tree of life and they'd live forever. Painless childbirth forever. No wars. No doctors. No death. That's what's going to happen. Now, Art, don't you know you made a deal when you got saved? Yes, Boy, you talk about a deal, man. You made one when you got saved. And if you're not saved, you know what to do. You've you got a good pastor here that preaches the truth to you, and you get it year in and year out, and day in and day out, and you know what to do. And why some of you uh, that are saved uh, are embarrassed or ashamed to walk down an aisle and let people know about it, I don't know. I don't think that shows much gratitude on your part. All right, let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, bless your word tonight. And Lord, I've been pretty long-winded here and covered a lot of ground, and maybe some of it isn't clear to these people. Some of it isn't clear to me at times. But I know enough to know that you're right and we're wrong every time you move. I don't know how I'm going to look at it. You're doing the right thing in the right way, and we'll know it someday and be thankful for it. And I pray if there's anybody who heard me speak tonight at all who's not ready to die, they'll be ready when they go out the door. And if you should take them tonight with a blood clot or something, a heart attack or something, they'll be in good hands. Well, let's pray a little while. I tell the musicians, pray a little something for us. And so your mind will get centered on the Lord and not on me or the picture of somebody else. And close your eyes there a few minutes. And like I said, put your finger on the time you were saved. And if you can't put your finger on the time you're saved, then make it right now. And don't have any doubt about it. If you have any doubt about it, Christ said, if you'll confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father. That's why we give invitations. We give a sinner a chance to confess Christ. He said, if you'll be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. If you're not ashamed of me, I won't be ashamed of you. Get the thing fixed. Let's pray a little while. How many people have you led to Christ since you were saved? Any? You came to a fountain of living with fresh water and they were all thirsty and dying of thirst and you found the fountain. Did you tell them where it was? Did you let them know you drank of it? Did you take them to it? God help you. All the heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Let me ask you this. 
How many of you folks are saved? You know when you were saved? Where were you saved? Who saved you? And you know right now if you should die, the Lord would take you home. Would I see your hand? Would you raise your hands up? Hold them up high. Hold them up high, please. Just a few minutes. Let me look. I would see. All right. Thank you. Put them down. I always see one or two people couldn't raise a hand. Now, what is it? You're trying to pretend to be timid, timid or something? You worry about something happen to you, scare you, or mess you up if you should join the right crowd? What is it? Whether well, it keeps you from accepting the greatest gift you'll ever accept and do the greatest thing you What is it that keeps you? I don't understand you. Bless my soul, honey, if you've been with what I've been, we've been through, you wouldn't wait a half a second. I'm going to turn this service over to your pastor here in just a minute. And once again, take a good look down there. We'll stand. I'll let him close the service as he has. The Lord feels to lead him. But I hope if you're not saved, you'll get saved. And I hope before you go this, leave this building tonight, somebody will know about it. You don't do anything else. Go home and tell the people at home what happened to you. Father, bless your people and prosper them and give them reassurance upon reassurance. You're going to do what you said. And may they believe more every day that even though what you said in that Bible is hated by the world and rejected by the world and disgusted of by the world, it's the truth. And it's going to take place like you said to the glory of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.